Today I'm in B Tauber Bischofsheim, which means Tauber, that's the name of the river, Bischofsheim. It's a bishop's palace, the bishop's palace on the Tauber. Uh, it's a place which has been inhabited for at least 5,000 years. And at the moment I am in the market square. Behind me is the town hall, which is comparatively new compared to the rest of it because it was built between 1865 to 1867. That was quite an important time for this town because around then, during the Austro-Prussian War, took place a battle in this town between the Prussians and the Württembergers. And obviously, as you probably know, Prussia went on to win the war and indeed, five years later, united Germany under Bismarck. Now, uh, history here, though, goes back much longer than that. And many of the buildings you see around us are medieval. It's noted for its half-timbered buildings. And I'm going to take you around now and to show you some of the places you can see around here. But I'm going to do this slightly differently as to the way I've done things in the past. Now, what I've done in the past, I've just walked around and talked. Uh, but now what I'm going to try and do is I am going to uh, just film. This is where professional people do it. I'm going to film it. I'll put the text in later. Now, I uh, have a problem. Obviously, I'm not a professional guide or anything like that. This isn't a subject I know all that particularly well. So I'll go away, write it, and come back, stick it all together, and then I'll publish it. Now, if you like it better done that way, just say, if you'd rather, I went back to the old way of doing things, whereby I am... Um, just walking around with the camera in my head and speaking off the top of my head, sorry, walking around with the camera in my hand and speaking off the top of my head, then um, I'll go back to doing it uh, that way. The problem is, you know, I don't necessarily remember things and uh, occasionally I make mistakes. Oh, look, there's football match on. World Cup's on at the moment. I was thinking of going to Russia, I was in fact not thinking of, I was really looking forward to going to Russia this year. And when Russia won in 2010, the uh, right to hold the World Cup, I was actually pleased, obviously I wanted England, but I wasn't that bothered when England didn't win, but I was really looking forward to a great trip round Russia. But anyway, instead of doing that, I'm having a great trip round Germany, and I'll tell you all about the World Cup, uh, why I didn't go to the World Cup in a, another video. Right, so, now let's get back on to Tauber Bishop's Heim. The name Tauber Bishop's Heim tells us about the town. It is the home of the bishop on the Tauber River. Today it has around 8,500 inhabitants and thanks to its preserved old architecture, scenic views along the river and its connection to gastronomy, it's a popular tourist destination, being located on the Romantic Road and Siegfriedstrasse. I arrived by motorhome and left my vehicle in the Free Stellplatz, which is located next to the swimming baths. For those arriving by car, the town is surrounded by large free car parks. My visit took place in June, which is also the wettest month, and although on the first day it looked as though it was going to pour down, it didn't. And on day two, I enjoyed brilliant sunny weather. Near Tauber Bischofsheim, there's a European bird sanctuary, a conservation area, three nature reserves, and two forest reserves. The river Tauber and its tributaries have created the landscape. The shell limestone soils are partially covered by lurs, which is good for agriculture, and the region is particularly known for fruit and viticulture. The area has been settled for at least 5,000 years and today we can see prehistoric finds in the Landscape Museum in the Kermainchen Castle of Tauber Bischofsheim. The city was first mentioned in 836 in the biography of St. Leoba, losing, using a similar name to what we have today, although the monastery the bishop came from dates to 100 years earlier. Alongside the monastery, one of the first German news was also founded which became a major educational and cultural centre for the entire Lower Main Valley. The market rights were received on or before 1147 and the trade was thriving when Frederick Barbarossa visited in 1165. In 1180 the Peters Capella, Peters Church, was built and which is today the oldest building in the city. 
The award of city rights was given in 1237 by Emperor Frederick II and remained in place until 1803. Construction of the city walls began around 1275, some of which can be seen near the city castle and the hunger tower today. From 1346 to 1527, Talbot Bishopsheim was part of a league of local cities which included Amorbach, Aschaffenburg, Büchen, Teberg, Kühlsheim, Miltenburg, Seligenstadt and Waldern. This was called a Neunstadtbund, the association of nine cities, and led to them each forming local self-government and mutual assistance in times of conflict against the sovereign the Archbishop of Mainz and the Mainz Cathedral chapter. These cities emancipated themselves in the course of the 15th centuries in ways such as the right of tax collection and increased powers. However, in the Peasants' War of 1525, towns in the area of Tauber Bischofsheim found themselves partially through force on the side of the rebellious peasants. When the peasants were defeated, the archbishops once more gained total control over the towns that have made up the Neunstadtbund. Like many towns, it suffered during the Thirty Years' War, and from 1631 to 1635 was under Swedish occupation. However, after the war it recovered, the St. Leoba Church was built as a monastery church by the Franciscans in 1657. The following year, the first chemist, Amt Apotheca, was opened. In 1688, a school was established by the Franciscans, the predecessor of today's Matthias Grunewald Gymnasium, Tauber Bischofsheim. Until 1850, the town was known as Bischofsheim. However, in order to better distinguish it from other cities thus called, the name of the river was added and Tauber Bischofsheim was born. In 1803, under Napoleon, the Holy Roman Empire was finally dissolved and in 1806 the city became part of the Grand Duchy of Baden. The new town hall was built from 1865 to 1867 and in 1866, following the Prussian victories at a nearby battles, the city became part of the German Confederation. A monument on Albert Schweitzer Street commemorates the fallen. The railway came in 1867, which in turn led to development. Water supply became assured with the construction of an aqueduct in 1896. In 1900, electrical lighting was introduced. The buildings of the town did not suffer too much as a result of the Nazi rule and the Second World War, although not so the population. Jewish inhabitants were rounded up by SA thugs on 3rd of September 1939 and forced to wear signs such as Wir sind die Kriegshetze, meaning we are the warmongers. That was three days after the start of the war and the same day that the UK and France came into it. They were forced to run to the Tauber Bischofsheim synagogue where they were humiliated. They had to kneel and kiss the ground. Then they were forced to rush into the nearby stream. Fifteen Jewish families were detained for weeks in the town hall. A commemorative plaque was erected in the foyer of the town hall in 1981, which commemorates the 35 Jewish citizens who were murdered in the Shoah. The Jewish population had existed since the early 13th century, although pogroms had occurred in 1235, 1298, 1336 to 1339, and in 13. 48 to 49. From the 17th century, the number of Jews in Tauber Bishopsheim increased. 
There was a synagogue, a school, a ritual bath, and a cemetery, and the work of the ritual slaughter and religious teacher was performed by the rabbi. In 1933, there were 106 Jewish people in the city. This ancient community was destroyed by the Nazis, with those that did not emigrate or escape being deported to the Goethe concentration camp on 22nd of October 1940. Whereas there is no longer a Jewish community, there are, however, a number of sites of Jewish interest in the area which the tourists can visit. After the Second World War, Tauber Bischofsheim was occupied by American troops. In 1955, the 1200th anniversary of Tauber Bischofsheim, uh, there was a great uh, celebration. In 1972, Tauber Bischofsheim received a motorway connection to the A81. In 1970, the Tauber, Tauber Frankischer Landscape was, Museum was opened in the Kermeichen Castle. In the year 1983, the Tauber Bischofsheim Christmas Market was organised for the first time on the market's place, and this has been a regular feature ever since. Uh, since 1995, the Christmas Market takes place on the Schlossplatz and in the castle cellar of the coal mines castle. Tauber Bischofsheim is great for cyclists and hikers. It's located on the Tauber Radweg, a 101 km long cycle path which runs through the valley of the Tauber in its entire length and is relatively flat. One can also follow the Odenwald Modonenweg which begins in Tauber Bischofsheim and takes one to Königheim, Waldun, Necker Valley, Eberbach, Heidelberg to the Rhine. Those on foot might like to see the educational wine tour. There are a number of museums, including a pharmacy museum in the form of pharmacy on Sonnenplatz, a farm museum, two village museums, a school museum and the Ta Tauber Frankischer Landscape Museum in the Comines Castle. The old town, which was formerly surrounded by a city wall, houses the castle and numerous Renaissance houses. The marketplace is surrounded by the town hall and several half-timbered houses. The Tauber Bischofsheimer Rathaus is one of the few in southern Germany which were built in neo-Gothic style. One of the most attractive old buildings is the Hunger Tower, which today is located next to the Mull Canal. Near the Hunger Tower is the Kormainz Castle with, with the Tower of the Turks, another tower of the former city fortifications. It was probably built at the beginning of the late Middle Ages as part of the city wall and the name suggests it was used as a prison. As with many other towns, the approximately 10 metres high city wall and up to 20 towers were removed with urban development. This tower alongside the small pit part of the city wall survived. It is today protected. One thing about this town I'm going to point out here is this is it's written that this is the house of uh, Thomas Bach, who was the president of the International Olympic Committee. So he lived here from 1953 to 1977. He was born in 1953, and if I remember rightly, he was in the fencing, as lots of people from here are in the fencing. And uh, it's the sort of the local sport, but it's had a number of champions. At fencing. One thing I noticed with them though, they all seem to die early. I don't have an explanation for that and maybe it's just uh, the way it appears to me which isn't true. Maybe somebody has an explanation or can add more to it than I can. There's a number of frogs here. Frog fountains, very original. As mentioned, it is noted for its fruit and wine, such as regional cider and apple juice, and local food specialities, such as tauber trout, birte hernelur, various pork and lamb dishes and of course spelt which is very much associated with the region. 
in the summer of 2018 I spent a little bit of time in this region and I've done other films on, on it which you can see also on this channel if you are interested. Qui siamo alla gelateria di Massimo e Massimo da quanto tempo sei qui in Germania? In Germania mio padre era, era da 40, 50 anni in Germania sì? e io sono la quarta generazione che facciamo gelato in Germania, abbiamo sempre novità, facciamo delle novità. Sì. Abbiamo fatto cioccolata, adesso abbiamo fatto tutto il cioccolata, cioccolata amara, abbiamo fatto lo yogurt con l'arancio e la pesca, yogurt con melograno. Cosa, cosa le posso offrire stasera a lei? Oh, ah. Allora, qual è la cosa più originale? Originale è il pistacchio siciliano. Oh sì, allora, ma io abitavo in Sicilia? Sì, sì io sono mezza parte siciliano, allora... Va bene, sì, allora questo... posso, le posso offrire un pistacchio di pronte? Oh, va bene, sì. Pistacchio di pronte, noi facciamo quello gelato artigianale, sì. senza nessun additivo, latte e tutti gli ingredienti, come facevano i miei bisnonni. Sì. Siamo ancora l'antica tradizione. Sì. Posso offrirle ancora un'altra nocciola? Oh, va bene, grazie. Perfetto, Ale. Mi fa molto piacere. Spero sia di suo gradimento, glielo offro. Oh, molto Tante grazie. Le cose. Molto Mi grazie. Un piacere conoscerla. Sì, anche a te. Buona grazie, buonasera. Ciao, 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 ciao. ciao, ciao. ciao.